Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton talked energy at the tail end of Sunday's debate, being asked a question about job losses in the industry. Energy is under siege by the Obama administration, under absolute siege. The EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, is killing these energy companies. And foreign companies are now coming in, buying our, buying so many of our different plants, and then rejiggering the plant so that they can take care of their oil. We are killing, absolutely killing, our energy business in this country. You know, because it sounds like you're in the business or you're aware of people in the business, you know that we are now for the first time ever energy independent. We are not dependent upon the Middle East, but the Middle East still controls a lot of the prices. So the price of oil has been way down, and that has had a damaging effect on a lot of the oil companies, right? We are, however, producing a lot of natural gas, which serves as a bridge to more uh, renewable fuels, and I think that's an important uh, transition. I'm joined by Karen Moreau, New York's Executive Director at the American Petroleum Institute, the national trade group that represents the oil and natural gas industry. Nice to see you. Hi, Rhonda. It was interesting, you know, that one comment in the debate is really kind of blowing up on social media. What can a new administration do about job losses in the industry? We have seen prices really fall, and that's impacted uh, many in the oil and gas industry. Well, I think both candidates have to remember the fact that the United States is now the largest producer of oil and gas in the world. We are reducing carbon emissions to its lowest levels in 20 years. And while some job losses may exist in the industry, you're going to see more domestic energy production if the right policies are adopted, leading to more job creation in that industry. And not to forget that low energy prices means more jobs in manufacturing, something both candidates seem to talk a lot about. In our industry, we're the backbone of the economy as we see it. We're about doing things and not talking about it. So I hope the candidates embrace that philosophy. I want to bring up two points with you that we often hear Donald Trump say and Hillary Clinton say. Donald Trump talks a lot about a war on coal. Is there a war on coal or is there a move to other types of energy? And within coal, we have seen some in the industry move to clean coal. Well, I think it's important to recognize that technology and innovation are so important no matter what your energy source is, coal, oil and gas. And when government evokes policies that are impediments to technology-driven innovation, it messes things up. And you see that in the coal industry. You see people just put out of work for no good reason other than politics. We don't want to see that happen in any industry. At the same time, we have Hillary Clinton talking a lot about moving toward renewables. Now, it's been my understanding that we're still going to rely on fossil fuels for a while, right? So we can't just move to renewables. There needs to be a little bit of everything. Well, exactly, Rhonda. And when you talk about renewables, you cannot speak of that in a practical matter without acknowledging the important role that natural gas in particular plays. So, for example, in electrical generation, you need a backup source of energy, natural gas, whether you have solar and wind, because those are intermittent sources of energy. So for a reliable electrical grid, for our energy security, we need an all of the above energy policy. So we know traditionally we have Republicans more opposed to regulation, Democrats favor it more. Um, you know, these are broad strokes I'm making, but that's typically what we see. How, however the election evolves, whoever wins, whoever is in Congress, what are bipartisan solutions the new administration can do with Congress that helps the industry, satisfies concern about environmental regulations, and it, is there such compromises possible, do you think? Well, so much regulation already takes place very effectively in the states. One thing we do not want to see is duplication of regulation. That's a problem. We also need predictability in the industry. Investors need predictability. We need consistency. We need clarity. Those are things I think that most uh, people need to embrace in leadership roles in this country. And we need a strong, solid energy policy that doesn't get mired in politics, that doesn't just respond to the loudest voice in the room, and that gives our companies the opportunity to develop the energy resources that we have so abundantly in our country. Uh, final question, do you think fracking will be able to move forward? 
Well, fracking has been taking place in this country for over 60 years. With, with some state opposition, depending sure, on Sure, absolutely, states. absolutely. But again, it's been continuing. We're producing more oil and gas than ever due to innovations in fracking and drilling technologies. And we have a very strong record of safety in this type of technology. Karen Moreau, a lot to talk about. We could talk an hour on this subject, but we, okay. <laughs> we've certainly um, touched some important points. Thanks so much. Thank you. I'm Rhonda Schapler for The Street.